Hi everyone. In the next few videos, we're going to be looking at chapter 15. And I just want to make a little side note that my puppy is laying right next to me while I make these videos, just snoring away. So you might hear that in the background, but he's just like too cute to kick off the bed. So um, I apologize if that's distracting. So we are going to be in this chapter, we're going to be looking at hypotheses tests. Um, and Eventually, in Unit 3, we'll be studying seven different hypotheses tests. But in this chapter, we'll be specifically looking at the first two, which is the one proportion Z test and the T test. When we talk about hypotheses tests, we need to talk about hypotheses. And the easiest way to do this is to start with an example. So we have a study published in the Journal of Air and Waste Management Association reported that the mean amount of particulate matter produced by cars and light trucks in an urban setting is 35 milligrams of particulate matter per mile of travel. Suppose that a new engine design is proposed that is intended to reduce the amount of particulate matter in the air. There are two possible outcomes that could happen with a new engine design. Either the new design will reduce the level of particulate matter or it will not. These are the hypotheses. So in any scenario, we're going to have two hypotheses, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Null in mathematics means zero. Um, so if you have a null set, it means that there's nothing in it. The null hypothesis implies that nothing has changed. And we use a sub-zero to denote the null hypothesis. So in the example above, the null hypothesis was that this new engine doesn't actually change the mean amount of particulate matter in the air. And so it would look like H sub-zero, the null hypothesis, is that mu is still equal to 35. The null hypothesis will always use an equal sign. The other type of hypothesis is the alternative hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis implies that there has been a change. We use a sub A or a sub 1 for the alternative hypothesis. I like to use sub A. So in this case, the alternative hypothesis would be that the mean, partic mean particulate matter in the air has been reduced by this new engine design. So there's several different ways that we can write a hypo an alternative hypothesis depending on um, kind of the question that's being asked, the claim that's being made. Um, and it does depend on whether or not we're talking about proportions or means. When we talk about proportions, the population proportion uses a P. When we talk about means, the population mean uses mu. These sub-zeros, like P sub-zero and mu sub-zero, those are the numbers. So in our last um, example, our mu sub-zero was 35. So the alternative hypotheses can use one of three symbols. We're either going to use a less than, a greater than, or a not equal to. The less than is called a left tail test because it's going to be looking at the left tail of the normal model or the student's T models. Similarly, with the greater than, we're looking at the right tail of the model. Um, together, those two make up what's called one-tailed hypotheses tests. I'm kind of going through this vocabulary right now, but this is not important vocabulary. Like, this is not the type of vocabulary that would show up on a test. But you do see it when you're reading examples or, um, and so forth. The other type is called a two-tailed test, and this is when we use this not equal to symbol. We use the not equal to when we're running a hypothesis test that is really looking to see if there's any type of change 
in the null hypothesis. And so that would imply that less than or greater than would be a change. Um, the best way to look at these is to look at examples. So on this page, these all have to do with proportions. So when I write the null and alternative hypotheses, I'm going to be using P's. In the first example, it says 20% of the cars of a certain model have needed costly transmission work after being driven between 50,000 and 100,000 miles. The manufacturer hopes that the redesign of the transmission has reduced this problem. So the, the percent that is, is um, the current level is 20%. So the null hypothesis is that the proportion hasn't changed and it's still 20%. But the alternative hypothesis is that this new redesign of the transmission has reduced the problem of these cars needing work. So that would reduce the proportion to be less than 20%. The next one says, a Harris poll taken surveyed 2,016 adults and found that 460 of them have one or more tattoos. Can you conclude that the percentage of adults that have at least one tattoo is more than 22%? So I want you to notice that when it says a Harris poll taken surveyed, this information right here is about the sample. But... When we write hypotheses, we are always writing hypotheses about the population. So what we want to use is this value here, because it says, can you conclude that the, the percentage, the true percentage of adults that have at least one tattoo or more is, sorry, is more than 22%. So this is our standard population proportion. So that's going to be our null hypothesis. And then the alternative hypothesis is, is this proportion actually greater than that? That's the question we're asking or the claim that we're making. Notice that with these examples, you can see that basically the hypotheses are the same. I'm using P's for both of them. The numbers between the two hypotheses are always going to be the same. The difference is going to be in the symbols that are used. The null hypothesis is always an equal to, and the alternative is going to use a less than, a greater than, or a not equal to. The last example. The Pew Research Center reported that only 15% of 18 to 24-year-olds read a daily newspaper. The publisher of a local newspaper wants to know whether the percentage of newspaper readers among students at a nearby college differs. This word is really important. Differs implies that it's simply different than this accepted proportion of 15%. Is it higher than 15%, lower than 15%? We just want to know if it's different. And that's why we use a not equal to for the alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is that, that there isn't any difference, that it's completely the same. But the, alter the alternative hypothesis is that the proportion is different from this, so not equal to. All right, let's do some hypotheses with means. It says boxes of a certain kind of cereal are labeled as containing 20 ounces. An, expector, an inspector thinks that the mean weight may be less than this. So, again, the null hypothesis is that there is no difference. So we would say that the mean does equal 20. But the claim or the question is, is this mean actually less than 20? Again, notice that the numbers are the same. I'm using a mu now because we're talking about means. But otherwise, everything's the same. It's just the symbols between the two hypotheses. Last year, the mean monthly rent for an apartment in a certain city was $800. A real estate agent believes that the mean rent is higher this year. 
So again, the null hypothesis is that nothing has changed. There has been no change in the rent. But the question or the claim is that this year the rent has increased. It's higher than $800. And the last one, a company that produces snack foods uses a machine to distribute 454 gram bags of pretzels with a standard deviation of 7.8 grams. Does a random sample of 25 bags provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the packaging machine is working properly? So this 454 that mean and the standard deviation of 7.8 is the population mean and standard deviation. But I don't need to know the population standard deviation. My hypotheses are about the mean. So when I write the null hypothesis, it is that the mean is still at 454. But now it's asking that a sample, does a sample show that the machine is working properly? If it's not working properly, if there is a problem, if there is a change, then not working properly would mean that the machine is distributing more than 454 or less than 454. Any difference between that. And so our alternative hypothesis would be that mu is not equal to 454. Again, anytime they're asking a question about whether or not there's simply a difference, that's when we use a not equal to sign. Okay, I'm going to get into how we conduct a hypothesis test in the next video.